everything's expensive these days, but if there's one thing that is not, it's the Korean street food. Do you guys want to see some delicious yet affordable food? Then come with me. Today I'm standing in for a Mangwon traditional market, one of the more popular traditional markets in Korea, and I'm going to be trying lots of amazing food. By the way, there's some great news that I'd like to share. It's my income reveal. Because guess why? In last December, I made a staggering amount of $177 from you guys listening to my songs. Please consider listening to my songs whenever you feel like. If we can continue to grow this as a team, I might be able to save up enough money to marry someone, and I'll also be able to put out better songs for you guys to listen to. Alright, enough talking now. Let's go get some food with that hard-earned money. I didn't eat anything before coming here, so I'd like to start with something that is filling. That's when I found this kalguksu place and their noodles were only $4. And of course, a side of kimchi is included for free. This day and age in Korea, for $4, there's not a lot of places that you can go to where you can actually get a full meal. Now, I'm glad that this is only $4, but does it taste like it's only worth $4? I hate to say this, but I feel like you kind of get what you pay for. <laughs> Just comparing it to some of the other places that I went for kalbuksu, I feel like the depth of the flavor is just not there, both in the noodles and the broth. Now, is it bad? No, it's not bad. And it's still a really great deal. Like I always say, us Koreans, we like to grab everything with kimchi. That just makes everything better, you know? I wish I can grab my childhood trauma with kimchi. Maybe that'll stop my daily nightmares. I'm gonna have to customize a little by adding some chili pepper powder. That's gotta make it better. I mean, $4 for a decent noodle meal? This may not be the most delicious thing ever, but it's still an unbelievable deal. Alright, there was a decent amount of food, but I'm a big boy and there was only an appetizer for me. How about we get some desserts? I found this place called Hun Hun Hot Duck. I heard that this place went viral on Korean Instagram. But you see guys, all kinds of overrated trash goes viral on Instagram, especially in Korea. So I came to see it for myself. And my friends, it looks pretty effing legit to me. Hotak is this deep fried pancake, filled with blazing hot sugar and nuts. It's better has a mix of flour and rice flour, so it's like insanely chewy. I loved it as a child and I still do. That looks bomb. Thick as hell, boy. This is where you pay and collect your own change. Always love this honor based system. Yeah, us Koreans, we don't steal because we have this thing called honor. Oh, yeah, we also have this thing called inescapable surveillance. I love the fact that they are going all out on their powder seasoning. I hate it when businesses clearly don't want to give you a lot, you know? Jesus, that looks bomb as hell. Oh, look at that guy. Who's that guy? I like him. To say that I'm excited would be an understatement. Of course, it's not my first time with hot dog, but it is my first time trying more modernized hot dog with lots of powder toppings. Wow. So this yellow powder thing is called brinko. It's like a very popular seasoning powder in Korea. It's a relatively new thing. And personally, I don't like brinko chicken. But I think I'm going to start to fall in love with this Brinko hot dog. Wow, pretty unbelievably good. So inside this deep fried hot dog, they have sugar, some nuts, cinnamon, and the melted sugar is like blazing hot. Now I'm going to try this Injangmi hot dog now. Injangmi is this bean-based powder. They usually consume the Injangmi powder with rice cake, but recently it became a very popular thing to have it with desserts. Because the first hot dog was really good, I'm pretty confident that this is gonna be really good too. Look at all that powder on my nose. Officer, I'm sorry. I had no idea what that powder was. Well, what can I say? This powder is really addicting too. The subtle sweetness on the crispy surface, it once again proves that more sweetness is just better. For this one, the worker added extra nuts on the inside. For something that is only $1.60, I felt like I'm just getting a lot out of it. Is this like my childhood dream come true or what? My preference is leaning towards this brinko hot dog. The merciless sweetness on the inside, it contrasts really well with the savory brinko sauce. Oh Jesus, that was good. Now hot dog's really great, but there was all carbs. So I feel like I need to go get some serious protein. 
and thank God I know just the perfect place for that. I found this place called Basak Matcha, which translates to crispy wagon, and decided to try one of their super crispy tonkatsu. They were also famous for their marshmallow ice cream too, so I'm gonna get that first. They torch the surface of the marshmallow for you, which makes a good show, but it also creates a hard caramelized surface on the marshmallow. Man, this ice cream and I are the same. Hardened by relentless fire, but still super sweet on the inside. And ladies cannot help but bite into us. Mm. Wow. So it looks like there's a little bit of chocolate there too. I really appreciate that. It seemed really gimmicky at first, but I thought it was quite good. The ice cream portion of it wasn't anything special, but with the caramelized marshmallow, oh my god. It's definitely worth a try. But don't forget, I also got this tonkatsu. So this is the mozzarella katsu. Should I take a bite? It had lots of mozzarella cheese and a pretty good amount of pork as well. Usually they sell tonkatsu in larger portion and sell it for well over $10. But honestly for most people, this $3 snack size tonkatsu might be just enough. After consuming some protein, I feel like I need more protein. Well, how about this chicken cracker that's been featured on TV over and over again? By the way, being featured on TV doesn't mean much in Korea. It's like everything's been featured on TV. Out of so many different flavors, I couldn't decide which one to get. So I decided to get what seemed to be the most popular flavors. Ah, 저거 두 가지 맛으로 양념 닭강정 그리고 화이트 크림 닭강정. She was kind enough to give me a few extra pieces of another flavor. Ah, 감사합니다. It was six dollars for all of that. So I wouldn't say it's exceptionally affordable, but it was still reasonably priced for a very popular place. Oh, 감사합니다. So this chicken cracker vendor, it's supposed to be one of the most popular vendors in the entire market. Well, that looks good. Let's start with the sweet and spicy sauce. Oh wow, pretty good. So they seem to have a pretty good amount of chicken in there. I do feel like it's just a little dry. I like how they give me some rice cakes too. Just chicken, that'd be boring, you know? So dakgangjong, chicken crackers, they look like any other Korean fried chicken. They're different in the sense that they're served at room temperature. I know that doesn't sound very appetizing, but for some reason it tastes really crispy and it tastes really good. So whether it's fried chicken or chicken cracker in Korea, most of the time you can get one serving with two different flavors. So I would recommend picking two different flavors each and every time. Hold on, I wanna eat more. I'm already kinda full, but don't you guys wanna see more and spend more time with me? Now it just doesn't feel right going home without trying some tteokbokki. So tteokbokki and tteokbokki. Oh, so kare tteok? I mean, this is like the definition of Korean street food. Whoa. So there's my food. That's a tteokbokki spicy rice cake. And that's assorted fried vegetables. I also got this fish cake that comes with rice cake. A lot of cakes, huh? Now this is a lot of food. Can't wait to try. Let me take this first bite of fish cake. Wow. It tasted like they just made the fish cake and the rice cake. It was like as fresh as it can be. It was one of the most impressive things that I had this day. The rice cake was really good. It's almost like mozzarella cheese. No doubt, really good stuff. I recently had pretty severe food poisoning, but as a Korean man, I just can't back down on this tteokbokki. Now, tteokbokki is that one street food that you will not fail to find anywhere in Korea. So this spicy tteokbokki sauce, it also has a lot of sugar. So it's like sweet and spicy, but more spicy. More often than not, it comes with lots of fish cakes in there too. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm not a huge fan of tteokbokki just because it's very like carb heavy and um, very often it's like too spicy for me. However, what I like to do is uh well i bet just about everyone in korea does this so you can take these fried vegetables and dip it in this spicy tteokbokki sauce wow i like this so much that i just decided to dump everything into that tteokbokki which again is pretty typical in korea 
<laughs> You're so wet. You like that, huh? Now, since I'm eating tteokbokki, it brings me back this uh, very fond memories of mine. It's a really sad memory. Do you guys want to hear the story? Oh, yes, of course. Of course you do. So it's a long time ago. I was a fat little Korean boy, okay? In my neighborhood, there was this tteokbokki vendor that was operating out of a tiny pickup truck. It was this lady. Anyway, she had a son, very skinny boy, around my age, and I ran into him in the playground. I forgot the whole lead up to that, but what I realized is that that boy called me fat. Now, I was a very gentle little boy, but being called fat, that was like the ultimate insult to me. So I started running after him, and he starts running too. I must have been like 8 at that time, and I was super out of shape, but somehow I was able to catch up to him. So I grabbed him and I judo threw him on the ground, and he starts crying. And then as soon as he started crying, I felt extremely guilty and I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of like turned around and went home. And the more I think about that moment, the older I got, the more I felt guilty because his mom was like super nice to me. He used to buy a lot of tteokbokki and hot dog from his mom. And I made that boy cry. Even as a boy, I understood that that boy wasn't very well off and their family was just getting by. A lot of those things combined, it made me really sad. For like years after that, I couldn't really get that out of my head because I felt like so bad. But he did call me fat, so he kind of deserved it. Yeah, calling me fat, triggering my deepest insecurity, that boy deserved worse. And guys, this is how bad people cleanse their feeling of guilt. By creating a narrative that blames the victim. I wanted to get some sweet treats to end the day with, so I came to this Korean donut place. Not even a dollar. That sounds like a bargain. Now, would you check out this guabegi, the screwed donut? Look how the surface has lumps of sugar. That's gotta be good. I don't know if there's anything special about the dough itself, but the surface is super crispy and there's a perfect amount of sugar, which is like too much sugar. Now, let's try this red bean donut. Oh Jesus, so sweet dude. Now this one's not sugar coated, so it's not as sweet. The sweetness actually comes from the red bean paste that's in this. You can find these donuts in any bakery in Korea. I try not to eat too often because being obese in Korea is a very painful thing. It's hard to argue that it's very good though. All right, I think that was a good amount of food for the day. I wish I could eat more, but I'm going to Japan in a few days. So I'm gonna have to get my body ready for that. Thank you guys very much for watching and stay tuned for my trip to Japan. It's gonna be like the most awesome thing ever.